Hey guys, Broxa here. So far on this channel we've mainly been doing stream highlights and we've been seeing some cool League of Legends gameplay but I felt like it was time to, to try something new and I decided to do an AMA, Q&A, whatever you want to call it and uh, just yeah answer some fan questions to try to get a, a bit of a different interaction with you guys and let you know um, let you know more about me and how, how things are going here in, in Berlin. So I put a post out on Twitter, gonna pick some of those questions and yeah, let's just get to work. What's your favorite food and color? Hmm, my favorite food and color. Actually, I think that one is, is relatively easy. My favorite food is lasagna for sure. There's no doubt about that one. And when it comes to color, I'm actually I'm actually split between two. One of them is orange, which is kind of funny considering I'm playing for Fnatic now. Um, and the other one is green. I always liked green and orange, but I'm not sure which one is my favorite. Since I am part of Fnatic, I'll go with orange. Why not? <laughs> and she also says, I'm cheering for you from Argentina. Oh, that's cool. Cool. Kiawe from France, it looks like, wants to ask, are you afraid of G2? <laughs> Of course, I am afraid of D2. Um, I think I'm just gonna answer this one short and sweet. And uh, no. Le Randy or Yannick Gangster wants to know: Do you like to watch football? And what's your favorite team and player? Okay. Um, I used to be really into football. I think in total, I've been playing football for eight, nine, maybe even ten years. Um, and I used to be really into it. The team I was following the most, the team that I was the biggest fan of, was always Liverpool. I always loved Liverpool and uh, especially during the, the Steven Gerrard era, I was really, really into them. Um, and I've always been a big fan of Steven Gerrard. So with that being said, ever since I became a pro player, I haven't had too much free time. So the past years I have not been following Liverpool and football enough to call myself a uh, a real Liverpool fan anymore, I think. What does your workout routine look like with fitting in scrims and practice? Also, what is your favorite workout? Okay. Um, well, so generally I prefer working out in the morning. Uh, with how our schedule looks like, I am pretty much busy every day from um, lunch time till late evening, uh, meaning that I have to choose either between the morning and late evening workouts and yeah I'm just much of a morning person so I like working out in the morning and I've split my my workouts routines up in like four or five days um, but generally when it comes to each day I like to uh, start off like warming up with some cardio after that I do whichever workout whether it's um, chest triceps um, legs uh, abs shoulders whatever and then I stretch at the end of it um, but if I have to pick one, I would say my least favorite is for sure legs. I hate work. <laughs> I hate training legs, and my favorite is chest. Next one comes from uh, someone that you know a little bit. It's from Gripex. What's your favorite achievement in 2018? Wink, wink. <laughs> wink, wink. I like. I like that wink. Well, I've had many really, really awesome moments and achievements in 2018. Winning both splits, especially the one in Copenhagen, were obviously highlights. Playing the world final was really, really sick as well. Um, and then, since it's uh, Griffix asking, I better, I better say that um, the top one achievement, by far the best of them all, was to play tandem mode with Griffix at All Stars. Um, that was that was great. Next question comes from Tom T. Willis. How's your relationship with Nemesis so far? Do you think your duo jungle mid will be the best in the LEC? Ever since I've spoken to Nemesis the first time, I feel like we've always have been having a really good relationship. I've always had a, a really fun time and a nice time talking to him and, and playing with him. Obviously, in this current moment, my synergy with Nemesis is not as good as it was with Caps, because I played with Caps for, for such a long time. But at the same time, I'm really confident that we're going to get there and it's just a matter of time before we become a really, really strong duo. And, probably the, the best one in Europe as well. So yeah, I'm definitely enjoying having Nemesis on board and he's a, a great guy to be, be on team with. Next question comes from Jughead's Beanie. Was Jungle your main role from the beginning or did you play another role when you started to play League? 
Okay, so in the beginning when I started playing in season one, I was actually playing exclusively free versus free. And when I got to level 30, if I remember correctly, I had only played one single five versus five game when I was level 30. But I just really liked the the old free versus free map and the, the fact that the games were so short and um, so action packed all the time because it was such a such a short map. I played a lot of free versus free. I played any champion. Um, then later. I moved on to 5 vs 5, starting solo queue, and I actually didn't have a main role. I had a pretty pretty weird and fun strategy, looking back at it, because um, my goal in Season 1 was... It wasn't necessarily to gain a lot of elo or, and to get gold or whatever. Um, I was a bronze player back then, and my goal playing ranked was to try to get at least one ranked win with every single champion in the game. And I remember I got to 80 wins, I won at least one game on 80 different champions. Uh, and then all of a sudden Riot reset, in, like there was a big reset in ranked and all my progress was lost and I was so so sad because I didn't, I didn't know they were going to reset and all of a sudden I had to, I had to start over again. <laughs> but yeah, I played pretty much every champion, um, I think the one I played the most was, was Trindamedo. Former Trinity main, you're one of those, man. <laughs> Next question, I won't say who it's from, but we probably all know who it is. Who's your favorite German third party LEC interviewer who shares a name with a League of Legends champion? So it's a favorite interviewer that shares a name with a League of Legends champion, meaning that if this interviewer has to be really cool, he has to be named after. Lisa you know, or Elise or maybe even Kazakh, you know, something like this. But like, I can't really, I can't really think of anyone cool enough to name himself after Lisa. Um, but yeah, I do know a, a pretty cool guy called Darius. So I'm, I'm going with my my good old friend Darius. <laughs> <laughs> Darius from the shot caller. Yeah, Darius from the shot caller. Killer Rocks has the question: What's your dream and your goal? What's my dream and my goal? Whew. Um, that's a really big one. Um, I don't know. I don't know what my dream is. If we look like far ahead in the future, I guess right now my both my dream and my goal is to get to the world final again and actually win it this time. Um, like last year was was really cool in a lot of ways, but it was also really bittersweet making it to the final and not. Not going all the way, not uh, standing there and in Incheon with the trophy at the end of it. So I would really like to be back in that world final and actually win it this time around. Albert Thelemann wants to know, do you sometimes regret being a, pro being a pro player? And if so, why? Well, I haven't yet regret being a pro player, but there's a lot of sacrifices that can make being a pro player really tough at times. Um, for me, the main ones are, first of all, having to live in another country than Denmark, uh, because I'm a, I'm really a family person. I have a really close relationship with my family and a lot of my friends as well. So being away from them and having very, very little time to spend with them is often really tough. And that's something I had to get used to. And even now, coming back to Berlin after, after New Year's was pretty weird after being home in Denmark for two months and having so much time with, with all of all of my close ones at home. And I think that's the probably the trickiest part about the job. And then the second thing, as I already mentioned, is that as a pro player, you don't really have free time. Like sure, we have uh, one off day per week, every Sunday. But at the same time, I often spend that Sunday either doing a long stream or uh, doing photo shoots or sponsor related things or commercials or whatever it may be. Even though we have one off day per week, um, there's not much uh, free time to take from. Um, and I think that's the two trickiest parts, but also with that being said, I don't regret it because there's still so many awesome experiences that you get from being a pro player. Like I'm not gonna sit here whining about myself actually making a, a living of uh, playing video games, right? So uh, it's still worth it for sure, um, yeah. Maria Tink, next question, uh, wants to know, so when you're winning Worlds this year, which champion will you choose to have the Fnatic skin and what kind of effects would you like to have? I like to win your winning Worlds this year, that's a, that's a confident fan, I, I appreciate that. <laughs> it teach me a thing or two about confidence. <laughs> but yeah, um, 
when we win Worlds this year, I will go for a Leeson skin. Obviously, it has to be a Leeson skin. And I already thought about it last year because we were so close. So obviously, I couldn't resist thinking about how my skin was going to be. And if we actually won Worlds, I wanted a Leeson skin that was really similar to Muay Thai. It should be like a super cool Fnatic themed Leeson skin, but with the Muay Thai effects, um, because I really, really love the Muay Thai skin. I can't play without it. So it would have, to, like, it would need the same animations and all that. So it feels like it feels like you are playing Muay Thai, but just with super cool Fnatic theme. Yeah, like lots of orange everywhere. Yeah. <laughs> but it has to be topless. I told you this last year. Okay, yeah, it's gotta true, be true. topless. Sean Ray, he wants to know uh, if your parents, what your parents said the first time you said that you were gonna go pro in league. Mm. So actually it took me a long time before I even got the idea of going pro in League. I think I was, I got to Challenger for the first time in Season 4, throughout Season 5 I was Challenger as well. And I actually don't think it was before Season 6, so after already being Challenger for two years that I was really considering to go pro. Um, and at that time I was uh, pretty close to finishing high school, I think I was halfway through my, my last year in high school, so when I talked to my parents, the deal was first thing to do is to finish high school and at the very least try to get some decent grades in high school and if I manage to do that, then they're giving me the full support and full freedom to do whatever I want after, so if I finish high school, then uh, going pro is absolutely fine and they um, kept their promise and have been, been some of my biggest fans and supporters ever since, so um, yeah, it was a, a pretty good and fair deal we made back then, I think. Diego Thrash wants you to describe in one word every member of the team, including Saf. Okay, we can start with Buivo. So Buivo in one word, talkative. Buivo likes to talk a lot, that's for sure. I don't think that's any secret. Nemesis? Nemesis... Um, I don't know. Um, I think right now I would probably go with Shy because Nemesis is still so so new to the team, so he's a bit shy and I wouldn't say scared, but he's a bit shy of everything. Um, like all of us, well, most of us know each other already, and he's coming in as an entirely new guy playing with four world finalists. Um, so I can't blame him at all, um, but he's also a super nice guy, so there's that. But I think at least as of right now, it's probably gonna have to be shy, but that's gonna change soon, I'm sure. For Reckless, I would go with Disciplined. Fully would go with... Um, <laughs> that's actually kind of tricky. I'll probably go with Friendly on Hulli. Um I know it's not the strongest word in the world to describe it, I guess, but Hulli is always super nice and well, no matter what happens, he's always gonna be there for you and gonna be really nice to you. Um, and he's just a, a cool, super cool guy to have around. Uh, for Joey, um, I would say a, a leadership. I think what we needed in 2017 is something Joey brought to us last year. He brings a lot of leadership, which is really, really important to a team, and he has really brought us together. Mephisto, our new assistant coach. I think Mephisto is really supportive. I haven't known him for too long yet. I think we, I've known him for like how long? around two weeks now, 10 days, two weeks, something like this. Um, and he's really supportive, really trying to be there for everyone and just help as much as he can. Oh yeah. And then we have our new league director, uh, Jan, or league director manager. And for him, it's for sure helpful. I think all of us have been a bit demanding after going back to Berlin, have a, have a lot of uh, things that needs to be solved. For me, it was you know, a broken window, having to set up a curtain, whichever kind of stuff, um, a lot of small things generally that we all all needed him to do and he's been really really helpful and always been there really fast to, to help out so helpful goes well for, for Jan. How about your camera guy? Uh, this idiot. My camera guy, hmm. I think only only one word can describe my, my camera guy and it's uh, beautiful. <laughs> Aww. The next question is from Andrew Jones and he has a real question for you. Could you get a pentakill with a fed Ivan? Okay. Um, <laughs> I'm sure that you could get a pentakill with a with a fed Ivan, but then you need to 
build accordingly, I feel like. You cannot go for the standard, boring support Ivan with Ardent, Redemption and all that. You need to you need to take it to the streets and you need to buy some really interesting things. I would probably suggest going something like Blood Race or Blade of the Ruined King with End Ivan. And maybe with a Hurricane as well, you know, just you, you pull a bush, you stand in the bush and you just smack everyone with your auto attacks. I think that's the way to go. If you try it and it goes wrong, don't blame me. But if you want to get a pentacle with Ivan, I think it's the way to go. <laughs> I guess the next follow-up question could be, would you try it in one of your solo key games? And put it on YouTube? I don't think I would want to try it personally, because if I play full attack, beat Ivan jungle and go 0-10, there's probably a risk of me getting banned. <laughs> so I don't want to risk it. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much for tuning into this video. I hope you enjoyed it and got to know me a little better. If you were unlucky this time around and I didn't end up picking your question, then you can always jump into my stream and maybe you're gonna be lucky sometime and I end up answering your specific question on stream. And yeah, other than that, just thanks for tuning into my videos. Thanks for supporting me and I'll see you guys around soon.